Pilotage. Pilotage is the art of inshore navigation when you have visual references to help you navigate along the coast in and out the harbour. Good planning is essential and the more that you can do beforehand, the easier it is. So pilotage is when you can see the land, navigation is when you can't see the land. So entering and leaving a harbour or mooring, you need a plan for leaving the harbour as well as entering, especially if it's unfamiliar to you. Also, the first 20 minutes of any passage are the most complex because you've got the mooring gear needs to be stowed, the sails need to be raised, other boats need to be avoided, you need to manoeuvre the boat, and if the conditions have been misjudged, perhaps you're not wearing the right clothes, the crew aren't wearing the right clothes, and they need to uh, put warmer clothes on. So the more you can plan beforehand, the more you can do beforehand, the easier it will be. So your job, the skipper's job. In inshore waters, the skipper should spend as much time as possible on deck. So you can't really navigate the boat from down below because all things happen and you can't see them. All that should have been done beforehand, so you need to be on deck. You need to keep a watch for other vessels. You need to monitor your position, of course, using visual references. And you need to delegate as much as you can. Have jobs such as <clears throat> keep an eye on the depth, look out, looking for the boys that you're expecting to appear. Give those jobs to individual crew members and get them to report back to you. As I say, delegate the tasks. Delegate the tasks of taking bearing, keep an eye on the echo sounder, watching for other boats. Give everyone a job. Make them useful. Then use this information that they feed back to you. Stay off the helm. You must not steer the boat. You must not do a task that takes you off task. You need to be able to be the manager to run the pilotage. You should always know your position. That's your geographical position. It's important that you don't rely on one source of position data. You should monitor your GPS, your depth, your bearings, your transits and general surroundings at all time. Not only knowing your position, you should know where the nearest danger is in relation to your position. Also, where safe water is in relation to your position. You should know the boys. We've done a whole section on boys. In fact, Jakey from the RWA has done the section on boys in this course. Uh, done a superb job. So, boy hopping. That's knowing the position of a boy, going to the next boy, going to the next boy. It's a really useful skill um, to employ near the coast. As you go past the boy, you tick it off. You make sure that the name of the boy you go past matches up with the name of the boy on the chart. Tick it off on the chart. Write the time you've gone past the boy and write your log reading so you know what your log reading was and when you were at that boy. A um, few basic problems you need to remember in order to avoid disaster. Risk of missing a boy and cutting a corner. Some channels, such as the channel up to Port Solent, um, have dog legs and it's really easy to look ahead and go for what you think is the next boy and it's not and cut the corner. Um, that's also in Bembridge, it's easier to do that. <clears throat> Make a note either on the notepad or on the chart of the bearing and distance from each mark. Armed with that information, you know exactly where to look for each boy, even before you arrive at the one before it. At the mark, turn the boat onto the required bearing and be confident the mark you're looking for will be somewhere in front of you. So before you get to the boy, you need to know the bearing and distance to the next boy. So before you get to the boy, you tell the helm's person, this is your next boring bearing when you get to the boy. This should all be on your pilotage plan and written down. You should be able to recognise all the boys from their shape, top mark, colours, lights. We've talked about this beforehand. And know what they look like on the chart. So here is a green boy. On the left it's unlit. G underneath the green. On the right it is lit because it has the, uh, the magenta tear coming out the bottom. And know what they indicate. So if we look at this chart in detail, we can see the cardinals, we can see the port and starboard marks, we can see the special marks, and we can see an isolated danger. And we know what they're marking, and we know the dangers um, that they're marking. So we know where they are relative to the dangers uh, where we're going on the chart. Make a plan. You need to make a plan um, for your passage plan and stick to that plan. So effective pilotage is to be one step ahead. Only then you'll know what to expect and what's lurking around the next bend. 
Construct a solid pilotage plan before you leaving. leave is essential. Get as much information as you can about the route. So the plan should include pilotage, research it. There's really good pilotage books, cruising almanacs and the uh, almanac you choose, choose here the reads almanacs packed with information in it. Read it, research it. Get out the charts, have a look at the passage chart, have a look at the detail chart. And on the detail chart, plan where you want to go. Tides. Know where you're going, know the tidal height of your harbour, whether it's rising or falling, and the tidal flow. We've done tutorials on tidal heights and tidal flows, and you need to work this all out beforehand. Weather forecast. Know what the weather's going to do, and what it's going to do um, during the passage and after the passage. So no two passage pilotage plans will be alike. The elements for successful plans will be there's a written plan, creating a writing plan by studying the charts and publications, major factor of good pilotage. The skipper remains flexible. The plan must be flexible, allow for variables, tide, weather, and also the unexpected. Have a plan B, C, D, and E. Make a plan. Keep the chart down below to stop it blowing away. Draw a rough plan on a whiteboard or a large piece of paper. Drawing plan allows you to start building a mental picture of where you're going as one bed the river is often similar to another. Some people can do it linear, some people can do it a diagram like we can see here. Um, some people um, trace the chart, piece of paper on the chart, trace the chart. Or if you're super prepared beforehand, photocopies of the harbour that you're going into, put them in laminate and use, um, use a pen you can write on that. So the plan should be made before the boat leaves. Useful information such as tidal heights written on the plan, channels, the courses written on the plan, the buoys you're going to go past, the landmarks you're going to see, local VHF channels, uh, keep track of your position by crossing off key points and tick them off as you go on your plan. Charts. Plot the entire passage on a small scale chart like we've got here on RWA chart 3. Use the large scale charts for navigation en route and for your pilotage. So here is, here is pilotage into Hamilton Sound and that's from the chartlet um, on your RWA chart. And this is it from the um, RWA training almanac. Slightly different to each other, so there's great detail here. And this one's got details of <clears throat> the marinas and the facilities in the marinas. And also, if you read the training almanac, it will give you the information of what's in um, Hamilton Sound and Hamilton Harbour. Choose alternative destinations on your route in case of problems or bad weather. So have a uh, plan B. Making a note the following on the charts. The distance and estimate, estimate of the passenger pilotage plan. Useful navigation ad, aids, lights, buoys, etc. Useful features that could be used to check your position. Note any hazards on route such as <clears throat> rocks, shallows, shoals, overfalls, tide rips, shipping lanes, harbour bylaws military practice areas, fishing grounds, plot any transits, I'll talk about transits in a sec, back bearings and clearing lines. So local knowledge, check with anyone you know who's been to the area recently about the route, as the pilot books could be out of date, local advice is valuable, in case you phone call to the hard master, um, can simplify a difficult arrival, especially in the summer when a berth may be difficult to find, but local advice should be treated with some caution, you know we have knowing the ability of the person who's offering it. Weather. This is a variable. Um, you know with the tides, you can work that out beforehand. Weather can be variable. So monitor the weather um, at least three days beforehand to get a feel of the trend and what's happening. Check the forecast again before you set out. Check the forecast en route. Don't go if the forecast is bad or consider an alternative sheltered passage. If in doubt, don't go. Um, I've done a couple of passages where I really shouldn't have gone and I got hit some terrible weather. Um, and looking back, I just wish I hadn't done it. So as a skipper, you have to face up. It's much better to make a wrong decision and be safe in the harbour um, than to go and put yourself and the boat and the crew at risk. Techniques for pilotage. So don't rely on one method of fixing your position. Constantly cross-check where you are. A variety of pilotage techniques. Use your common sense. If one method doesn't agree with the others, check again. 
but be aware of seeing or what you want to see. There's an important point here. The mind tries to make things fit. So as an examiner, I have been taken up to uh, Limington River, being told by the candidate that it's Bewley River, because he'd convinced in his mind that that was the right river that we were going up. So beware of seeing what you want to see. Believe in your navigation. Transits. More accurate than bearings. We like transits. Um, there's no deviation or variation to work out. You can do it when the sea is rough. Um, they're instantaneous and can be mon monitored constantly. Occur free frequently in confined waters. Many areas of tricky pilotage problems have a series of transits ready to set up to assist mariners. And there's lots of natural transits, so look on the chart beforehand. So here we go, looking at the chart beforehand, lining up the flagpoles, lining up the buoys with things on the chart, um, lining up the beacons. So have a good look at the chart and possibly draw on your transits beforehand. So here we have a transit view for me. Um, we can see the uh, the land is slightly closed. View from B, we can see the land is open. So we can see a lot of the far headland. A, we can see less of the far headland. And if we line the two um, headlands up and we're on the red line, we wouldn't see the other headland at all. You can get fixed features. So here we've got a beacon and a chimney we know if we draw a line on the chart and they line up when we look at them we're on that line and you can get those going into harbors leading marks um, usually the back mark is higher so we can see a picture on the right and you to look for those in your pilotage and in your charts uh, beforehand so here we go two lights and these are on the chart lining up um, and it's essential to check the bearing to see if it matches that on the charts and here's a similar one in the picture on the bottom right there uh, the two beacons they line up they'll line up the two beacons on the chart bearing lines we've done compass lines um, we've done bearings so we can use these for our pilotage so if we know that we want to go straight in towards the uh, the chimney there at 27 we know that if we keep it at 27 we're going in along that line and we'd be clear of obstructions going in speed Slow the boat down to speed that you can translate your paper chart as what's actually seen. Our harbour may well have a six knot speed limit, but if you can only think at four knots, slow down. So the advice here is don't, um, don't go faster than you can navigate. There's nothing wrong with slowing down. If you completely um, get confused, stop. Um, stop the boat, reassemble, resort yourself out, then carry on. There is always water where you've come from. So without having to do any navigation at all, where you come from, there's safe water. Tide. So when you look at a chart, um, it's a chart datum. So it looks a lot different from when you go in. So a channel which looks straightforward on the chart, and if you look at it here with all these posts and withers sticking up, at higher water, it looks a lot more confusing. So bear in mind that what you see on the water won't necessarily be what you see on the chart. Echo sounder measures the depth um, on the water. If you um, add the height of the tide above chart datum, you can contour a line and go along a set depth on your chart. Um, if it's a relatively flat bottom, that's difficult to do. But if it's a fairly sh steep shelving seabed, it's easier to do. And here we go. Decided to go along the contour line here. So look at the contour line on the chart, allow for the height of tide above chart datum, which you've worked out, and you can go along that contour line. Here, what we've done is taken a bearing with a radio mast. We know the depth of the tide. Um, we factor, factored that in, and if we go, say the depth of the tide was five meters, um, if our echo sounder is reading from the depth of the water, and our echo sounder said 35, we would be on the 30 meter contour line. So when it said 35, we're here on the 30 meter contour line. That bearing is here, so we can use a bearing and a depth to check our position. Leading lights here. So we look at the leading lights on the picture on the bottom. On the left hand one, we'd have to turn to starboard or turn to right. On the middle one, the two lights lining up, we're on course. And on the right hand one, we're too far off to port or to the left 
and we'd have to turn right. Sectored light, these are great. On some charts, it would just be written in letters, FG, fixed green, FW, fixed white, FR, fixed red. And here it is colored in. And this is what we see. So if we look at the lighthouse, it says F, which stands for fixed, white, red, green, 10-6, big M. So that's the visibility of that light in miles, which is a nominal range. So that assumes a visibility of 10 miles, nominal range. So if we're high enough, we'd see the white for 10 miles, the red and the green for six miles. So if we're going along here, we'd see the fixed red, here we'd see the fixed right, white, here we'd see the fixed green. If we weaved along this line, we would see red, then white, then red, then white. So if we're weaving along this line where it's changing, we know we're on this line and we can use that as a cunning fix without having to do too much uh, navigation. And here we go. Left hand picture here, vessels in the red sector can see red. In the middle, vessels in the white sector can see white. On the right, in the green sector, can see green. So pilotage, do as much as you can prior to the pilotage. It makes it so much easier. There's a lot of stuff in the pilotage that is fixed, such as the tides, the tidal heights, the tidal flows will be fixed. The information on the harbour, the facilities on the harbour, the depths on the harbour. So research that um, with the books you have on the internet. Use Google Earth, use Navionics web app. Uh, I've got a whole new tutorial on Navionics and how to use that and free resources. Um, if you're unsure at all, just stop. Just stop and reassess. There's always safe water where you came from. So there's always water behind you. So if you're unsure, just stop. Just don't plow on not knowing where you are. Know the tidal heights for your pilotage times, um, for where you're going into in your pilotage. Know the forecast, not only the forecast from what's happening, but what's going to happen. Um, so you look at your forecast, you check your forecast, you check your forecast on the phone. So if there's um, clouds coming in, look at the sky. See how the sky matches up with your forecast, because the weather could be coming quicker or slower than predicted, and the sky will be your clue for that. Have a plan C, B, C and D. What would happen if? What would happen if? And as a, as a skipper of the boat, that should be going through your mind. What would happen? What would I do if? What would I do if? What would I do if? Give all the crew members jobs. Okay, so there's no reason you should go in shallow waters because there should be a crew member looking at the echo sounder at all times and reporting back to you. So give them individual jobs, not more than one, so they can concentrate on that job and give it back to you. Set a depth alarm. And most of all, enjoy yourself. You're there to manage, you're there to have fun, you're there to take the boat safely. Um, and what a great achievement it is to do a successful pilotage into a new harbour. So, that is it, pilotage. Well done.